The purpose of this video is to give an introduction to tension, an idea that's typically applied to strings. If you start with a regular old piece of string and just let it sit on a table like this, there isn't actually any tension in the string. In this image, you can see the cute little hands of my seven-year-old daughter, who was quite eager to help me with my tension video. As you can see, the string still doesn't have any tension in it. Now, in this image, my daughter has grabbed the string with both hands and she's pulling, and now the string has tension. She's pulling in opposite directions with her two hands, and those pulling forces are represented by FL and FR. An important question to tackle is, how do FL and FR compare? Let's isolate the string and use Newton's second law, F equals MA. Negative FL plus FR is equal to MA. Now take a moment to think about what the mass of the string might be. Most of the time the string will have a very tiny mass compared to the rest of the system, so we just say that the mass is equal to zero. And that means that FL is equal to FR. These aren't an action-reaction pair as in Newton's third law, but they are equal and opposite. Now, Newton's third law states that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So each of the hands is pulling on the string, and according to Newton's third law, the string has to be pulling back on each of the hands. I'll label that force that the string exerts back on the hands as T, and because we found that FL is equal to FR, these tension forces have to be equal to each other. Whenever the string is considered to be massless, which is pretty much always, the forces on the ends of the string end up being equal. So typically the only forces that are shown are the forces that the string is exerting on the thing it's attached to, like this. In a sense, the hands are exerting equal and opposite forces on each other through the string, and this idea is emphasized by just drawing the two forces shown here. Now that you see how it works, I want to show you a few more examples. Here's a teacup suspended by a string, and that's my older daughter's hand, by the way, because she also wanted a chance to help with this video. The string has tension in it. It's pulling up on the cup and down on the hand, and from the previous slides, we know how to draw those forces. Note also that there's a force of gravity, mg, acting down on the teacup. It's a very common mistake to assume from the picture that T is equal to mg, but don't fall into that trap. Remember that Newton's second law tells us that F net equals ma, and the net force acting on the cup in this case is T minus mg. Looking at this equation, you can see that T will be equal to mg only if A is equal to zero, and this will be the case if there's no motion at all or if the cup moves with constant velocity. So do assume that T's are equal, but do not assume that T is equal to mg. Here's another scenario with a teacup, and my older daughter is pictured again. The string is now wrapped around the handle of the cup, so it has essentially become like two strings, each with its own tension. Meanwhile, mg acts down at the point where the string is wrapped around the handle. The next move in understanding the forces involved here would be to resolve the tensions into components and note that the horizontal components of the tensions cancel and that the vertical components together cancel with mg. Here's yet another scenario. Two unequal masses are attached by a string that hangs over a pulley, and this is called an Atwood machine. This is a single string, but it's interacting with the pulley, so we can't just assume that the tension is going to be the same on both sides of the string. I'll label the left side as T1 and the right side as T2. Here's another example with a pulley and an inclined plane, and again the tensions are labeled, this time with A and B for subscripts. Now, if the pulley has a very slight mass compared to the other masses in the problem, and if the pulley rotates without any friction in its axle, then the tensions on either side of the pulley will be equal. If you haven't learned about rotational motion yet, you can just believe me for now, and I'll just note that if the pulley does have mass and the system is accelerating, these tensions will have to be different, so keep an eye out for that. If the pulleys are massless and frictionless, then the pictures would look like this. Once you know how the tensions work, things can just keep getting more complicated. You can add a second mass to the incline, and since that's a new string, it will have a new tension. And you can add another hanging mass, and that's another new string, so it will have yet another tension. Of course, there are other forces too, like mg for each block, normal forces, and frictional forces, and all of these would need to be considered to proceed with figuring out what's going on here, but the point of this video is to focus on tension, so I'll just leave it at that. To conclude, when you encounter a physics problem with a string, don't get tense. Just remember that if a string is stretched between two hands or two objects or whatever, and the string is massless, it will exert inward forces like this.